Hello everyone, I'm MVL and in this video I'd like to show you how you can play arcade games on your PC using RetroArch. First thing to do is to download RetroArch from their website. It's usable for many different systems, but I'm grabbing it for PC here. Now the only other thing I want to mention about the website is that the program recently got a UI user interface makeover and the info on the website is out of date now, showing the old UI which looked a lot like a PSP PlayStation Portable menu. After you install the program, you'll see this as the default theme, not the PSP or PS3 look. You can change this but I'm fine with it. So now let's grab MAME to run these games, which is super easy. Click Load Core, then Download Core, and then navigate to the desired core files. You can download them directly through the program, which is very convenient. For MAME, there are several different versions, and I'm grabbing a few because different ROM files might need specific versions to work properly. Now we need to get the games into the program. I'm not using complete sets here, just individual ROM files, so that's what I'm going to show how to do. You could launch a game manually each time if you want, but if we make playlists, it'll be set up to go whenever you want. So launch the desktop menu from the window section and make a playlist. The icon of the playlist depends on the name. As you can see here, MAME and Neo Geo have their own icons in the program, but the name doesn't matter whatsoever beyond that. Then grab your game file and drag it into the playlist. Here you can enter the name and choose which core to launch the game. If one doesn't work, don't worry, just try another. The other setting is just where it saves artwork, so you don't need to change that, I always leave that as it is. You can also put art here, which is great for presentation. I've been using arcade flyers or posters for the most part now for arcade games and box art for other games. You just drag the art into the section on the right hand side, you need to right click download thumbnail on the game after dragging over the art for that to work, and it's as simple as that. The downside of this method for importing games that I have used is you do have to manually add each game yourself. Of course there is a bigger import method as I previously mentioned, but this is what works for me. Now we can launch the game. Press Alt and Enter for full screen or to return to windowed mode. As you can see, it works just fine. If you have a USB controller attached, it should recognize that as well. But you may need to change the controls for the game you are playing. Press F1 to bring up the RetroArch menu. You can alter other settings here and turn off notifications that may pop up as well. And you also have access to save states if you want to use them. But changing the controls is one of my few complaints. Depending on the core and the file you are using, it may list the controls differently. And when you adjust the controls for each game specifically, you can't just press the button you want to assign. You have to manually enter it yourself. So you may not only have to guess what the in-game button is, but also the buttons assigned to your controller as well. But the good news is once you're done, you can save your settings for the game and it'll remember that for next time. So you don't have to do it again. Once you're done, pressing escape twice quits. I will say RetroArch is a lot easier to use than MAME itself. Firstly, you can have multiple cores for MAME for different ROMs, so you don't need to have multiple MAME installs on your computer. The program also configures the game to work as they should. Using MAME by itself, I couldn't get anything to work properly, but here, they work just fine. For example, if I boot up this game, Rastan Free Warrior Blade, it will correctly be set up to use two screens as it did in the arcade, if you use the right core. I couldn't figure out how to do this on MAME itself, but here with RetroArch, it launches as it should do. Likewise, if we launch a Zapper game like Revolution X, if you selected the right core, the Zapper will be set up for PC mouse which works pretty well, and it's just great to be able to play these kind of games. But when I tried this on MAME itself, the cursor wouldn't move correctly, but in RetroArch, it works as it should. By the way, don't panic if a game won't launch, has errors or freezes upon loading. You may need to press Ctrl, Alt and Delete and end the program from the taskbar menu, but that's just the MAME core error. Just try a different MAME core until it works properly. 
With a good PC, you can even get 3D games to work as well. This is awesome, and something I couldn't get to work on the Super Retrocade at all. This is Dancing Eyes, a strange but enjoyable puzzle game, where you need to connect your path on a grid, avoiding enemies. You can eliminate those enemies if you catch them in your connected lines, and naturally, when you successfully connect your lines, the grid vanishes. Neo Geo games also work on this, but you do need to have a Neo Geo BIOS file in the folder with the Neo Geo ROMs. Now I won't say where to find ROM files in this video, but if you do a quick Google search, you can find what you want very easily. You'll be like, wow, ROMs are easy to find. Now, as I mentioned previously, I tried using the Super Retrocade to play multiple arcade machine emulator files, but compatibility wasn't great. A lot of games ran slowly or didn't work at all, but using this method with RetroArch, I've got everything to work on PC. You can also use a lot of USB controllers, like the Retrobit gamepad from the Super Retrocade, or even a Sega USB controller to play the games. There are a ton of options. Naturally, you can use this program to run games from different systems. I have heard of a PlayStation emulator where you can run games from the actual discs, which seems really handy if you had hardware failure or as a convenient option for streaming and recording. For myself, something like that would be very helpful for Dreamcast since my console is broken and I can't currently play my game discs with it. Overall, RetroArch is easy to use and a fantastic and versatile system. I'm very excited about it and experiencing these arcade games at home, which you just couldn't get hold of otherwise. If you've got any recommendations, by the way, I would love to hear them. I hope this video helped you discover the program, a little bit about how to use it, and thank you for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like or a comment to let me know what you think, and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. And if you'd like to, you can also support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, and once again, thank you for watching, I've been MVL, and I will catch you next time.